Veterans for Strong America is an organization created to recruit and support conservative veterans willing to join the battle to restore constitution and freedom to America. Stephen Gossard is a conservative running as an independent candidate for election to the Office of State Representative for the 76th District in the state of Ohio. Stephen is a Marine Corps veteran. He served with honor and pride. Stephen pledges to represent the people's interest only and not a political party if elected. Zach Wyatt is 25 years old. He is a sixth generation Missourian. He grew up in the Novinger and Greencastle areas of the 2nd District and graduated from Adair County R1 High School. Upon graduation, he answered his nation's call and enlisted in the United States Air Force. In the military, he served as an airborne Chechen, Russian, Ukrainian linguist. He flew both on the RC-135 and the C-130. The experience helped him develop leadership skills and teamwork skills, well suited for state representative. Both of these candidates for state office are true conservatives. Neither is a per career politician. They are part of the groundswell of patriotic Americans who feel compelled to seek office and return this country to the Constitution and freedom. Both have signed the Freedom Papers. Both are endorsed by Veterans for a Strong America. Visit their sites. Lend them your support. They are, ladies and gentlemen, the future of this great country. And now V4A presents Freedom Paper Number 4, as read by Edward DeVere. The tongue is a flame and a rudder. Freedom Paper Number 4. Dear Mr. Obama, you and the radical sheik cabal of the politically correct have always given freedom to the few by taking freedom away from the many. This is the baleful vanity endemic in your rabid and malignant ideology, to raise up the less fortunate by tearing down those who live in a certain degree of hard-earned comfort, something Lincoln warned that America should never try to do. True Americans give freedom to the few while increasing the freedom of an entire society so that the levels of all ships rise together. You have made it a top priority of your administration to pass hate crimes prevention acts that would accord a bevy of legal privileges to people of certain races, religions, and sexual orientation, including the practitioners of over 150 sexual perversions as under the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, effectively establishing these groups as privileged aristocracy that has far more legal protections than the average U.S. citizen. It is to this aristocracy of victims that you want to give the basis in law for what could be, in many circumstances, baseless accusations of hate crimes or attempted hate crimes. Against these ac accusations, citizens of average means would find it extremely burdensome to defend and exonerate themselves in court, ultimately bankrupting them, of course, from the legal fees alone. In many cases, there would be few, if any, clear lines of limitation within the proposed hate crimes prevention legislation, barring the hapless citizens' accusers from exercising the full legal leverage at will necessary to threaten a hate crimes lawsuit and extort their marks economic life substance with virtual impunity because there are such loose judicial requirements needed to prove guilt and such vague and partisan standards that make proving one's innocence virtually unattainable. Your sick and treasonous endgame is to establish nothing other than an entire hate victims industry and a dictatorship of the shyster lawyers. All this, which you would thinly describe as law, for all intents and purposes, is nothing but unmitigated despotism. Your plans to pass these un-American hate crimes prevention acts into law are utterly without historical justification. We Americans have always had the strength, fortitude, and character to courageously face and deal with whatever offensive speech our fellow Americans have served up to us under their rights to free speech and freedom of religion. The only thing we will never abide are those ideological aliens like you who would take these rights away because your cultural sensibilities are offended due to the fact that you are not truly American. Rather than become an American in the truest sense, you want America to change, to transform, in order to accommodate your cultural and ideological biases that are more at home with tyranny than true freedom. We don't need you to protect our delicate sensibilities, Barry. Quite the contrary. We need you and your politically correct stooges and those with overly sensitive ears to move to Canada, or one of the many conflict-avoiding cultures that have the luxury of feeling superior to America, because America actually works out its differences in the light of day, in public, and mostly in a straightforward fashion, exposing all the ugliness of those opinions which arise from the gutter. The Tories moved north to avoid the American Revolution. They became Canadians, and only with a few, albeit uh, rare, glorious exceptions, have avoided all conflict that comes with being a vital participant in history ever since. We are a nation of people who speak freely what is on our minds, 
and what we speak overflows from our hearts. Did you ever wonder why the whole world waits with such great interest and attention to quote-unquote see what America does next? Why does America so naturally lead the world, especially at those times when we are most true to ourselves and the basic values that founded our great nation? It is because, unlike other nations, we let the soul of the individual person flow freely out into words and all forms of expression. The soul of humanity is more incandescent, more transparently visible, visible here, with all its foibles and all its glory, in this land, America the Beautiful. As the Declaration of Freedom proclaims, all truth about the nature of humanity is revealed most fully in a free society, and this alone provides the truest basis for the governance of human life through law. We Americans have proven time after time that we can deal with the hate speech in these United States without your thought police babysitting our every word. We always have, and we always will. The proponents of slavery and Jim Crow have raged on, and we have dealt with them again and again, in decade after decade. We didn't become a nation of slave owners just because we let the slave owners speak freely. We didn't vote in Jim Crow north of the Mason-Dixon line just because the KKK marched in Washington, D.C. by the thousands. That's because no one ever tried to deny us our right to express our higher selves, the best that is within us, our religion, our Judeo-Christian faith. The origin of all history starts in the soul of the individual and first becomes visible in his or her words. And it is the tongue, animated by the souls of individuals, that is the true rudder of human history. You can't control history by controlling the words or self-expression of individuals or groups, Mr. Obama. You can't control individuals by controlling their words because you cannot control the soul of the individual person, something you never learned in Muslim Indonesia where you spent the most psychologically formative years of your life. In those despotic nations, they control speech by murdering members of the opposition, a favorite method of Mr. Odinga of Kenya, who promised to establish Sharia law there if elected, and who promoted genocide. Mr. Odinga, whom you have avidly supported politically since your early days in the Illinois legislature, in blatant violation of the Logan Act. You know what, Barry? You belong in prison. In this life, and hell in the next. Every great teaching of religion, psychology, and philosophy, every black drop of pain wrung from the raw experience of life, establishes with utmost certainty that evil in all its forms is made more powerful when it is hidden. By seeking to limit free speech and religion, you make the evils of government itself so much stronger. Furthermore, you strengthen the conviction of those holding evil opinions and speaking evil words that their beliefs are true that society and the government fear their evil opinions for the very reason that they are true. We Americans say, go ahead, bring it on. Let the evil words among us rise up and be spoken from the souls who hate. We're America. We can take it. The glory of our religion and our faith will shine all the more brightly in the face of evil. The need for religious faith will be all the more clear. And like a noble prow, our pulpits will break the waves of the vast and stormy ocean of history because only faith has the power to change the hearts and to save the souls lost in the darkness of hate. But you wouldn't understand this, would you? Out of, out of a motive of banal political expediency to which you have publicly admitted, you sat for 20 years under the teaching of a pulpit that spewed racism and hatred Sunday after Sunday. The black racism of Jeremiah Wright's black liberation theology continued the formation of your soul into maturity, fittingly building upon the foundation of Muslim culture and political tyranny from your early formative years. Did you ever wonder why all the so-called sophisticated, politically correct nations of Europe and elsewhere that restrict speech, and always under widely diverse definitions of what should be considered politically correct, inevitably start world wars from which America has to save the world, or else they collapse into sectarian violence and civil war, into which America has to intervene. It is because America has already confronted and vanquished so many of the world's demons in that great cultural immune system called the free marketplace of ideas. We have allowed human nature to fully express itself in America, and we have proven through to the world that we can love, yes, love, our fellow Americans and fight by their side, no matter where their nation of origin may be, as long as they are people who truly love freedom, as long as they are people unlike you, Barry, because of the free marketplace of ideas, we have a much better idea of who the lunatics are. We have designed our means of governing based upon the natural laws that reveal themselves in this crucible of light, 
that is American society. We have designed our educational system ideally to support free thinking and the critical analysis of evil ideologies so that we can respond effectively to them. Why are your PC minions destroying our colleges and universities and making them into places where thought is anything but free? It is because they don't want their errors challenged on a level intellectual playing field, isn't it? It would seem so. Don't you see that those who desire to speak their evil thoughts but are restricted from doing so by government regulations and laws are driven to speak more and more in code? In polite company, they simply state the very same ideas but with better smelling words. As a result, governments that are bent on controlling speech must now do so more and more by attempting to restrict the indirect expression of an idea and punish citizens for any inference that could be taken from their speech, whether that inference be direct or extremely indirect. Therefore, a whole new evil emerges. The slippery slope of governmental laws restricting and regulating speech must inevitably become more arbitrary, more tyrannical, if they are to restrict the increasingly indirect expression of an idea. To support the tyrannical objectives of this hate legislation phalanx you've launched, you seek to establish what are obviously the beginnings of a George Orwell 1984-style thought police. And you can be absolutely sure that we will resist you with every fiber of our being and not yield until your plans are devastated. Just wait until the American people find out that you have made it a top priority of your administration to set up a publicly funded but privately managed 24-hour command center for spying on Americans with what you deem to be politically incorrect views. The David Ray Hitchens Hate Crimes Prevention Act, H.R. 262, erects a federal hate crimes command center in Washington, D.C., and funds its $10 million annual operating budget, probably to be run by the ACLU. What will this do? All we have to do is look to the West. Under laws already passed in California, any student, teacher, or faculty member who criticizes homosexuality can be fired or expelled. Under the hate crimes prevention laws you support, the penalties could include prison time and massive, ruinous financial penalties. By current definitions of hate speech, the Bible itself is hate literature and counsels hate crimes. Under the David Ray Hate Crime Prevention Act of 2009, H.R. 256, anyone who counseled violence against a federally protected group will be tried as a principal, like the one who has actually committed the hate crime, as a federal hate criminal. This can mean, in practice, that a priest or rabbi who teaches the Bible's counsel that homosexuality is immoral, and a mentally disturbed member of the congregation goes and commits a hate crime, that minister can be convicted as a federal hate criminal. What a web you have woven, you and the cockroaches like you, Mr. Obama. And tragically, most of the 50 states have been duped into passing legislation that accepts the idea there should be protected groups like Muslims, homosexuals, etc. If it's not a hate crime, though, for the Black Panthers to kill a cracker or to call for them to be murdered by their followers because whites are not a protected group. We therefore demand that these hate laws be torn down on the state and federal level and all bureaucratic machinery set up to enforce these un-American laws that restrict free speech and give unequal protection of the law to groups be considered, uh, considered to be victims, be torn down and defunded. This is America, Barry, not Indonesia, and not Kenya, and not Canada. The most dangerous hate is the really sophisticated kind of intellectual hate that is in your soul and that of your mentor, Reverend Wright, the kind that would steal freedom from generations of Americans who are, to a surpassing degree, responsible and decent in their use of words. Freedom of speech is designed to protect offensive speech because only by allowing offensive speech is truth forced to become strong enough within the soul of a nation to be able to make a decisive impact on history. We see who and what you are, Barry Sotoro, of Kenya and the Luo tribe, where they worship you as a god, and you don't even try to put a stop to it with the kind of god-fearing, desperate concern that any good Christian man would have to redirect all worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit alone. And our Founding Fathers saw the likes of you with utter clarity at a distance from across the centuries. And they erected a giant rat trap called the U.S. Constitution for such a time as this.